hello, my name is Craig Kirkpatrick. And I was an employee of Cascade Microtech when I submitted these uh, slides, but I recently rejoined working for Agilent Technologies since one month ago. So I just wanted to provide that introduction. If you have questions, you can find me over in the Agilent booth. So I always took a selfish approach with the micro apps when I was at Cascade, is I wanted to take my FAQs, you know, the, the questions I didn't want to answer weekly and daily, and I'd document them. And this is actually one that I answered weekly for the three years I worked for Cascade Microtech, and it's about, hey, I know my calibration is flawed, but I really am struggling to find out why and diagnose it. Can you help me? And after you know, years of doing this, I got to be pretty good at taking customers' um, WinCal setup files and looking at the raw measurements and looking at uh, post-corrected measurements. So the, really the essence of the paper is, well, framing where this is from is microprobing, Oh, let me back up here. Microprobing with um, Cascades probes, their CAL standards, which they call impedance standard substrates, and then a vector network analyzer. Um, and really the WinCal product, it, its business proposition is it makes calibration as simple, as repeatable, and as easy as possible. And it's also got tools in there for doing this validation work. So this is the, uh, the beginning dilemma. A customer sent me this data and th this is what he sees in the WinCal validation, um, and it's percent error in phase as a measurement of the open after the cal. And so what we're seeing is it's 100% error, <laughs> and it really should ideally be, be below this red limit line that's at 3%. Well, 3% looks like zero on that graph. So your calibration is unacceptable, now what do you do? Well. First understand uh, where we're heading with this presentation is we'll consider what are the very likely and common causes. And then uh, we'll look at the met methods that I always used. So the, the most likely cause of a poor wafer level um, calibration is the probes simply not making good contact to the cal standards, the shorts, the opens, the loads, the throughs. And this can be due to the probes not being completely planarized. So if a probe, which is typically a ground signal ground probe, is viewed under a microscope, you cannot tell whether you're tilted slightly, and you could end up with, say, ground and signal touching, but not the third ground. Well, then you don't have a very good connection at all. So that's very common, and usually is due to, say, let's say, lack of experience. Probes could be dirty. Well, dirty is kind of a relative word. It usually means the probes have picked up metal. Sometimes they've, they've uh, essentially gotten uh, like aluminum sort of plated onto them by uh, adhering to these metal flakes, or simply the probes can be damaged or broken. So the other thing is simply procedurally, you can end up, as you work under the microscope with these probes, you simply are touching down on the wrong standards. And that's this middle bullet. And then there's other things just more fundamental and mundane, like you've not chosen the most appropriate settings for the vector network analyzer, and a classic one is, uh, accepting the default IF bandwidth uh, by hitting the preset button on an Agilent PNA, which is usually optimized for speed more than uh, precision and dynamic range. Okay, so procedurally looking at uh, the first bullet there, which is take a look at the, um, the raw measurements. This is the way within WinCal to export the raw measurements. And I put a lot of material in this, again, as I said, selfishly as an FAQ, because it's on the conference DVD. So you can take this material and then you can leverage it. So it's not meant always for you to be able to read all the fine print on the slides. It's meant to show you where the menus are so you could do this yourself. So this is the way that you could save away, uh, sort of in mass, all of the raw measurements of the reflect and the through standards. And so when you plot these, Remember, these are just raw measurements, they're uncorrected, but still a network analyzer uncorrected, if you look at it as log magnitude versus frequency, it'll still look reasonable. And so if we look at opens and short standards, does this look reasonable? And what you see is that at low frequency, it's, yeah, it's believable that a reflect standard ought to be somewhere near zero dB, even uncorrected. Um, if we look at the through standards, this is also uncorrected. So now you're looking at the, uh, 
the internal losses and the network analyzer, also the port cable losses. And so that's why it's got a, a rather steep loss curve. Um, and actually there was another problem here in this calibration where it reversed and went back up. And this was actually something that didn't make it into the paper where um, as I was helping this customer work through this, I said, did you get a microwave absorber with your ISS? He's like, yeah, I did. I said, are you using it? He says, no. I said, well, I, you're, I can see you're not using it. And it's why this reversed because uh, essentially moding conditions on the ISS without the uh, microwave absorber. <laughs> so more plotting of uh, these raw standards. Here's a plot of the raw measurements of the loads on two ports. And the question to you is, can you diagnose and recognize that something really is not right here? At, at low frequency, this is looking again like a shorter and open. It doesn't look like a load. A load ought to have a lot of loss at low frequency. So that's what I immediately pointed out to the customer. I said, just go remeasure things. You know, make sure you're landing on the correct standards. And when he, when he remeasured them, then he got very believable raw measurements. You know, when they're corrected, it'll be much better than minus 30 dB, but a raw measurement, yeah, this is more believable. And so we made some progress in solving this problem. And then his calibration validation, remember the very first slide that I showed where it went up to 100% and I said the, uh, the red line was at 3%. Well, this is that 3% error line and out to 110 gigahertz, well, he's staying below that up to at least 90 gigahertz. And then the limit line basically stops there, but still that's a quite good calibration validation. And this, this is a feature that's built into WinCal. And the uh, WinCal product, the way that it accomplishes calibration validation is you complete the calibration and for certain calibration types like the LRRM calibration, which treats reflect standards as unknowns, you can post correct the short or the open and, pr and then compare the corrected open or the corrected short to the actual, uh, let's say the, the calibration coefficient that would be used as an SOLT coefficient and then see how well they fit. And so that's what this is doing is essentially it's looking at the, the phase comparison of the cal coefficient prediction for the open with the actual measurement of the open and that's actually a clever validation technique that's built in as a feature within WinCal. So the next part of the agenda was, okay, beyond looking at raw standards, what else is useful? Well, sometimes customers' intuition is, I can finish a calibration and I can just remeasure my standards and I can look at my through, I can look at my loads and I can see if, you know, if the load's in the center of the Smith chart and if the through looks really good too. And then I caution people all the time. I say that doesn't work for all calibration types to remeasure standards, especially if you're just simply using SOLT as the calibration. What happens is the calibration math will take even broken standards and make them look perfect when you remeasure them. And so it's really an inappropriate thing to do with SOLT. But if you consider other calibration types, like, uh, well, the, the third bullet up from the bottom, it says LRRM. That's line reflect, reflect match. That's a calibration algorithm that's proprietary to Cascade. Well, effectively it treats the opens as equal reflex, but unknowns. It treats the shorts as equal reflex, but unknowns. So then if you go to go remeasure those, you're actually taking a measurement that's valid because there's no mathematical knowledge other than that they're equal reflex on the two ports. And so it's a valid way then to do calibration validation or to do this uh, post-correction uh, look at the raw measurements. The other calibration um, type where this could be appropriate is if you look at the SOLR calibration, it treats the through as unknown. So you could remeasure the through afterward and look if the th see if the through looks pr as predicted. I'm watching my time here. Okay, so procedurally, if I post-corrected the short, the open, the load, the through that were used in LRRM, then here they are in a Smith chart. And what you can barely see in the center of the Smith chart is the load and the throughs, because they look like a perfect match. And they're, they're actually two dots on top of each other in the Smith chart. And of course, then on the left perimeter is the, uh, the short, and the right perimeter is the open, but it has um, 
you know, essentially a, a large calibration coefficient, so it's a normal sort of a phase progression across 110 gigahertz. Now, looking at this very closely, you'd say, well, okay, if you're remeasuring the open, and that's what I'm seeing on the Smith chart, what's that little tail right there that's going outside of the Smith chart? That's showing some gain, right? And so there is a small problem here, but now I plot the uh, same thing, the same small problem in uh, dB versus frequency, and what you're seeing is, yeah, it's, it's showing about a quarter of a dB of gain at 110 gigahertz. There are plenty of people that would kill to have that residual Cal er error. Um, and so it's, I say in this slide, yeah, you still have some problem that you could work on, but maybe uh, you have diminishing returns trying to fight a problem where you've only got a quarter dB of residual calibration error showing up 110 gigahertz. And so um, what I've got here, honestly, are three slides that are mostly meant to be documentation that's on the DVD. So what I'm going to do for essentially keeping things on pace is skip through the procedures that you can use in the documentation and then just talk about the result. So within the WinCal, there is what's called the RF data viewer. It's basically a really nice S-parameter viewer calculator. M many functions can be applied to the S-parameter simply by right-clicking them and their intrinsic functions, but you also have something called the math scratch pad. In the math scratch pad, you can really invent your own uh, tool set. And what I did in the previous slides is documented how you could take the raw measurements of the standards, and instead of having to remeasure them, you've already got their raw measurements. You've got the error set that's the correction. You don't have to go back and reprobe your standards. Just apply the correction to the raw measurements and plot them. And so this is a, uh, a comparison then of the port one raw open in blue and then corrected port one open in green. And you know, out to 110 gigahertz, the open looks like a nice, well, reasonably flat line at zero dB. So um, that, that's the, uh, the, the tool within WinCal, and again, the, uh, somewhat of the documentation that I had in the previous three slides that you can copy and paste out of the uh, conference DVD um, that you could collect at the back of the theater. Okay, so conclusions are, um, it's a pretty good challenge to diagnose uh, calibration problems and, and honestly knowledge that people have applied and remeasuring standards usually rarely does it right. Um, so you have to apply other techniques. And WinCal nicely has all the tools available built into it to be an excellent tool to help you solve these problems. And so I've got actually like one minute to take questions before I give the microphone to someone. <laughs> or the other thing I could say is if you look for me on a corner in the Agilent booth area or, or just find me after I get off the stage, we can talk. <laughs>